Okay. Okay. Okay, everyone up. Okay. True or false? The UK military actually has a program called Skynet. Is that true or false? Green for true, red for false. One, two, three, go. And the act, the, uh, I see a lot of you are familiar with the military thinking. Uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? The answer is true. Actually, in fairness, okay, so I did this same question in San Diego, with, except with the U.S. military. So the U.S. military actually named their stuff after the movie. The movie named its stuff after the U.K. program. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Terminator movie, right? Okay. Uh, the French microcomputer was developed in 1972 as an alternative to the more expensive digital equipment PDP-8. The first micro cost more or less than $2,000. It, uh, it doesn't matter, it just, it either, either way it works. <laughs> green, green is more and red is less than $2,000 for this, for this uh, my, uh, mini computer, well it's a mini computer. Yeah, it's in dollars, sorry. The answer actually is in francs, so. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, turns out it was less. Oh. So red for less if you held up red. It was about 8,500 francs. And it depends on how you calculate it. That's somewhere between 13 and 1,700 US dollars. So don't ask me why I switched to dollars. Um, okay, now this, this, you have to have been around Linux for a while to get this one. So there was a really, really famous IBM commercial called His Name is Linux, came out in 2003. And there was a young blonde boy in it, and he was absorbing all of the world's knowledge. It was a very, very well-made commercial. Um, and he only spoke two sentences. Is that true or false? Okay, so green for true, red for false. One, two, three, go. And the answer is false. <laughs> because the blonde boy did not say a single word. It's a very good commercial. Uh, so anyway, IBM, good, kudos to IBM for that one. Okay, this one's interesting also. So question number 16. Bigelow Aerospace recently announced plans for a rotating space station in low Earth orbit for use in part as a space hotel. Okay, so people have been talking about space hotels forever. Well, since 2001 at least. Uh, the first elements are to be in place by 2025. So is that kind of whole thing, is that true or false? Green for true, red for false. One, two, three, go. Oh, interesting. That's false. <laughs> okay, what are we down to? I think we're, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, C, five. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, should I do it one more time? I know the people are standing going, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, let's save some. Okay, one more. Uh, so, sorry. So Bigelow does make space habitats. In fact, actually got one in orbit right now attached to the International Space Station. Uh, but they have not n announced anything for a rotating station. Actually, it's interesting because Bigelow has these modules ready to go, uh, but they're waiting for something that has launch capacity. So they're waiting. Uh, so anyway. Uh, okay. Question 17. Okay. This is a little bit obscure. <laughs> what computer language is set to be retired early next year? Is it green for Urdu, Urdu script? That's a real language. <laughs> or red for Python? Okay, one, two, three, go. Wait, what are you guys, you guys aren't playing, you're confusing me. <laughs> okay, the answer is Python. Python 2.7. <laughs> Support for the Python 2 programming language is going away on January 1st, which means, oddly enough, that Urdu, Urdu script will be better supported than Python 2 in January. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, okay, I think we're down to three. So go ahead and come on up. People who are still standing. All right. Yeah. Oh, what happened to the guy? <laughs> All right. Okay. That is a shame to stop there because I had some great additional questions. But we got to move on. We're running out of prizes. Okay, so time for game two. So this is, uh, this is a game of chance, or at least that's what we assert. Uh, and it is pretty simple. It's the same type of deal. Everyone will stand up. Uh, oh, this is not. It's rock, paper, scissors. Ignore that first screen. Okay, so it's rock, paper, scissors. Okay, everybody stand up. So here's how it's going to work. So, uh, encoded in the presentation is the presenter's answer. You have to beat the presenter. Okay, if you tie the presenter, you lose. So two thirds of you gonna sit down every every round. This game is brutal and quick. <laughs> okay, just in case you're unfamiliar with rock paper scissors, uh, we yeah we're not doing lizard Spock anymore. Uh, it's hard enough with just three. Um, Anyway, so we have uh, paper is just a flat hand in the air, uh, scissors is two fingers, and rock is a, a fist, okay? You need to, what? Yes, so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, in San Diego, I reused an old presentation and someone in the audience looked it up and, and well, cheating is a harsh word. Uh, <laughs> They are creatively uh, competitive. Uh, so, um, so let's see, do I have the rules here? Okay, yeah. Against the presenter. So you kind of understand the rules. Uh, rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock. I've never understood why, but... Um, okay, so what it's gonna do is I'm gonna say ready, set, go. And when I say go, everyone needs to throw, your, throw their selection and hold that, and then we'll see what the presenter is, and two-thirds of you will sit down. And uh, so we've got, still got some nice prizes, so, okay. One, two, three, go. Okay, presenter is scissors. If you are rock, you get to stay in the game. So if you're rock, oh. <laughs> that is brutal, okay. Okay. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, some of you know my tricks, but not this time. <laughs> Seriously, like for seven years, I've done two rocks in a row. <laughs> yeah, one time I did seven times. Uh, okay, what, okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, and this time it's stay in the game if you're a rock. <laughs> There's a whole psychology to this. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, whoa, 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 we might be in the range here. We got one, two, three, four. Oh, we'll do it one more time. Sorry. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very, okay. So first, remember who you are. <laughs> because if all of you are eliminated, you same four get to stand back up again, okay? So if we, if we go to zero, which is a real possibility, Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, scissors stay in. Okay, we're down to 
two, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and come on up. Okay, everybody up? Well, this will probably be the last round, so if you've got a lucky charm, you might want to start using it. Uh, okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. <laughs> This, this game requires an extreme amount of luck, which I've heard is hereditary. Um, one, two, three, go. Rock. Oh, wow, okay. That eliminated less than half. That was well done, people. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. <laughs> okay. Okay. One, two, three, go. Oh, see, people are playing the odds here on uh, things that haven't come up. You're right. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, go. Scissors. What are we at? Oh. I think we're down to, are we down to three? Okay. Yep, come on up. Okay, I'm going to fast forward now because I got a couple of closing remarks. Thank you all for playing. Oops. I have a lot of these. I don't know why you, don't, you can't see them because you theoretically wouldn't remember them. Okay. Okay, so uh, first, if you did not get a prize and you're feeling really, really super bad, I do have the official candy of Fuego, <laughs> which is these hot tamales. Uh, and you can come up to the stage and I'll give you one. <laughs> I know it's not much, but you know, a little bit of candy. Uh, so, but uh, I just wanted to make a couple of observations here. I really enjoy Embedded Linux Conference. It's a chance when I get to see uh, a lot of the people that are working on the same types of things that I am uh, and uh, facing the same types of problems. And I just have a couple of observations. So a couple of recent events. So I actually got some emails from GitLab just in the last two weeks uh, announcing a new telemetry policy. And uh, telemetry policy is uh, talking about them gathering data about their customers' usage and sending it back automatically. Um, and then just yesterday, I think it was, I got an apology from, from GitLab saying that they were reverting that new telemetry policy uh, because something of a customer and, and a community uproar about it. Uh, and there were two problems, and I want to give credit to GitLab for uh, reversing that policy and not, you know, anyway. Um, problem number one was that uh, they were sending usage data potentially to a third party, and the default was opt out instead of opt in, and there's some obvious issues with that. Uh, the bigger problem, according to the GitLab CEO, uh, was that GitLab didn't discuss this enough ahead of time with their customers and uh, with the community. And um, the Linux Foundation, I don't know if this is coincidental or not. I suspect not because these things take a long time to brew behind the scenes. The Linux Fa Foundation just announced this week a new policy on telemetry policies, uh, saying that they really ought to be opt, opt uh, in instead of opt out. Um, so 
just a couple of observations on this. So people are very passionate about they, what they do. They're passionate about uh, security and privacy. And a lot of this stuff is very political. Uh, a lot of companies have lost the trust uh, of their people. Uh, the GitLab CEO, I want to give him credit for apologizing. Now, it's easy to say, well, of course he'd apologize if he had to backtrack on that. Uh, but there were on social media and some of their forums there were calls for one of the GitLab officers to resign. And I think, uh, my personal opinion, that's a little bit of an overreaction. I think you need to give credit to people. It, it's, uh, I think it's, it's going to happen that people make mistakes. Uh, they have different understanding of what the expectations are. And so I actually uh, think that what GitLab did, you know, while it's, uh, I think it'll be a, a blip in the history of GitLab, but I just hope, don't hope they're super negatively affected by it. I think they're trying to do the right thing. Um, and I think it shows uh, a certain amount of strength to go out and apologize. And, and we've all seen people who we believe are apologizing just to placate the crowd. Uh, but in this case, I don't think that's what happened. Uh, when someone issues an apology, they do put themselves at a little bit of a, a weakness. You know, they admit that they've done something wrong, and it's easy for people to kind of heap on at that moment and start to abuse. And I just don't think that's a, a good thing. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, we're told by all kinds of entities in our lives to be kind to other people, our parents, you know, our government, uh, religions. Uh, and I think, I really believe that the admonition to be kind to other people, it's not solely about uh, the other person. It's not just to make life better for the other person. I think uh, treating people with respect and being kind to them is something that helps you uh, if, if that's your attitude in life. So. Um, that's really all I want to say. Open source attracts a lot of people uh, because they think it's a way to make the world a better place. We're giving something that can really benefit all of humanity. Uh, and that's a noble cause. And we should try to be kind while doing it. Uh, you know, you'll make your life better as well as other people's life better. So with that, I say thank you for coming to Embedded Linux Conference. I hope that you had a, a good time at the sessions, that you learned some things, that you made some new friends. And I hope to see you again in the future. So. Thank <laughs> you.